So I'm Sebastian from Weave, and I'm going to talk about uh, the new kit on the block. It's about uh, token curated registries. And I think this is like one of the first meaningful applications where uh, yeah, crypto economics come into the game. Uh, before diving into the technical details, let me first of all say something about me. Um, so I have like two hats on. First of all, I'm a professor for cryptography. So, you know, I know all those cryptographic protocol design. You know, I did it by heart for more than 15 years. I'm also teaching students, you know, how to design crypto protocols. Um, and my second hat is when I, that I'm the co-founder of Weave. And Weave is a uh, project in the intersection of uh, blockchain and IoT. So in a nutshell, uh, we're developing the technology in order uh, to build IoT data marketplaces. So in our world, we would like to empower the economy of things where IoT devices can just you know, supply and demand uh, data and commercialize it through uh, a concept known as marketplaces. And um, here comes the disclaimer. You know, what's the connection with Weave and with my cryptography background? We also designed um, um, a network model and a protocol for uh, the, the Weave system. And we, of course, heavily make use of crypto economic incentive strategies. And one application, which is uh, the outcome of some uh, joint research uh, with uh, one of my teammates, Sid, is the idea of graded token created registries because uh, in our network model we make use of those uh, variants of TCRs um, and I'm gonna later show you some kind of applications how graded TCRs um, are used in our network design um, but before going into that uh, uh, technicalities let's start from scratch um, so this talk is about new art which I'm really happy, it's about crypto economics. So we already man uh, mentioned and, uh, or we already heard in prior talks that crypto economics is like a new research field, which is somewhere in the intersection of game theory, mechanism design, and cryptography. And uh, the nice thing about it is that, um, you know, those concepts, you know, have been around for years, uh, for example, you know, in our community, in the crypto community, we, you know, uh, called, called it like rational cryptography, where we want to design cryptographic protocols in presence of rational players. Um, but that used to be just some kind of niche for uh, crypto researchers, simply because there was no application for that. But thanks to blockchain, you know, finally, cr uh, cryptographic protocol designers have a meaningful and practical application of this uh, theory. Um, and one of the things, uh, one of the first applications which, you know, the blockchain community came up uh, with was uh, creation market, and in particular, um, a, a very, very particular application in that whole field Namely, um, the problem how to, you know, create a list. So, what is the problem that people try to solve with some kind of incentive strategies? Um, it's about designing a protocol with a very, very uh, simple function or task. Namely, you know, just to create a list. So, let, let's look you know, how one would design such a protocol in a very, very old school way. So think about like, you know, we're in the uh, 1980s where blockchain and crypto economics haven't been around. So a protocol would uh, look like that. There's Alice. Alice would like to create some kind of um, uh, whitelist for websites. Um, and the way it would go is that Alice, for example, claims, hey, Phony.com is maybe a bad website. There's a registry. Um, this entry is at some point written at that registry. And if uh, Bob 
wants now to figure out you know, whether this uh, website is good or bad. He just looks it up on, a, on the registry, figures out, ah, phony.com is blacklist, and that's why you know, he's, he's going to, for example, cancel uh, the request to go to that website. Yeah? So this is a very, very simple, you know, let's call it like our Hello World protocol, how to you know, create a list. So let's analyze this protocol. So any ideas? What is good, what is bad about this protocol? Okay, who can, who can help him? Ah, Dimi. It's really safe to go on the list, much better to Okay, so that's one point. Yeah, right? Um, so there are several issues. So let's you know, just you know, summarize you know, some of them that you know, I found last night. Um, so the problem with that protocol is, for example, um, yeah, what about the quality of the list? Yeah, it's subjective, as you said. So it mi may lead to an incomplete list. list. Um, and another problem is, say, what about, you know, uh, assuming you know Alice had a bad day, you know, and just you know thinks that sh she can spam the list with uh, fake or bad entries, and yeah, so the result of that protocol is that it may lead to a, a high false positive rate. Yeah, got it. Good. So now let's try to think how we can you know design uh, a similar protocol you know, using crypto economic incentive strategies. So now think about, you know, we want to build this protocol on top of our blockchain and everybody, you know, has access to some kind of asset. And with that asset, we can incentivize or disincentivize uh, our protocol players. And that, that is roughly the main idea behind token curated registries. So here again, the design goal is the same, but now we would like to incentivize our players, in particular Alice, uh, to maybe contribute only good entries and to punish her for maybe you know, claiming bad entries. So how does this protocol work now? So we use some kind of help uh, of uh, you know, SpongePop, um, so SpongePob is now a new player in our protocol, and uh, the way the protocol works is that Alice, you know, still you know makes a proposal about a good entry or a bad entry, but she backs up her claim with some kind of stake. Um, and before this entry is now written on our uh, registry, you know, there are some kind of voters. These are you know the yellow SpongeBob's. Um, they somehow counterstake the same amount and verify whether the entry is maybe a good or a bad one. Yeah? Um, it's, it's a democratic voting and there are also several ways how to do it, but uh, the, the most simple uh, way would be to assume that you know, uh, SpongeBob's vote proportional to the amount of stake Alice uh, stakes and once there is a quorum on the choice, is that a good or a bad entry, right? So um, the, the winning voters are going to share the total amount of stake among each others. <coughs> yeah? Okay. And next, uh, once, you know, now Bob's, Bob accesses the registry, you know, he we'll see that maybe phony.com is like a bad entry. Good, let's do the same exercise again. So let's analyze now this protocol. So any ideas what goes bad or what goes good with that protocol? Say again, please. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, so c could you tell a bit more about that? Well, it's just you have a, an empty list. No one, who cares about putting things on the list? Anyone can create an empty list. It's an empty list purporting to be the same. Uh, okay. But how do you know which one is an empty list? 
Okay. Uh, there is definitely something about your statement, but think about that there is a reward. So um, all the players, so SpongeBob and Alice, are incentivized to contribute to the list because you know uh, the fortified stake is shared among them. So there is some kind of fee they you know could uh, gain from participating in that protocol. But but you're right, maybe it doesn't really suffice. No, so, so all the stake is put in one pot, right. and then uh, there's a qu quorum voting. So is that you know, a good or a bad decision? And uh, the winners are you know, going to then share the whole pot among each other. Okay. So they're going to fortify the, the stake of, say, the bad voters. So for example, if Alice you know, wants to upload a fake entry, you know, she's going to lose her stake. Because the quorum will figure out, no, this is a bad entry. So essentially, it's not a problem for the people that agree with bad information because they can do fake decisions yeah. that takes a lot of time, even less than three months. Yeah, so collision is not a problem as long as you know the democratic process works. Yeah, so long as you pr like assume that it's a one percent on it. Yeah, so th that's a very good good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, also, it devalues the list, right? The more fewer beneficiaries of the list, the which is increasing the value of this next. And so you're hoping that that somehow counteracts it. You, you didn't actually mention that the tokens were for like the right young people. <laughs> no. Okay. I think it's reaching the shelling point. Uh, basically, having a group of people agree that this is some kind of value to them and they want to pay attention and create it as such, you basically enable or You're on the top fold of uh, hacking infrastructure. Right? That, that would be basically creating a group for you because there's no skin in the game. Right. Interestingly enough, sorry, I don't want to hijack, but interestingly enough, Hacker News, they, they go to an incredibly great length because there is so much skin in the game of getting things copied out of it. Like, there are rules upon rules upon rules about how they count votes. But, but, but the utility part is easy. Good. So let's sum up. There are still a lot of open problems with TCRs. Uh, so, some of them have been already raised here. There are even more. But still, I think TCRs have great potential if they are once properly understood, but it requires a bit more research. Um, so let me summarize, say, my concerns with uh, that approach. And I, I see it rather more from a functional point of view. Namely, um, um, yeah, let's directly go to the uh, negative side. Um, I think TCRs are a bit static. Static in the sense that by definition they are only binary. So you can you know, just make a decision, is it a good entry or is it a bad entry? You know, uh, whether the voting scheme behind that is the right choice and whether it suffices for example in order to bootstrap the list i think this is a different problem because it rather relates to the voting mechanism behind and um, th there are maybe solutions to that that are based on quadratic voting maybe you know just throwing that buzzword in the air um and um you know these kinds of lists have also the limitation that they are a bit uh, um, binary. Binary in the sense that either you're in or you're out. But what happens, for example, you know, if an entry updates over time? Yeah. So think about you know a website is good, but at some point it gets hijacked and then it turns into a bad site. So the mechanics of um, TCRs do not allow us so far to maybe update the changes in a smart way. And that was exactly the motivation for us 
to you know, give more functionality into that mechanism. And we call it graded token created registries. So now the idea is you know, to combine TCRs, but also extend the protocol with you know, giving the opportunity to upvote or downvote an entry. And the protocol works quite similar like you know, the TCR protocol I described before. It's, it's, it's a natural <laughs> extension uh, by giving you know, two more functions to, to this protocol, namely you know, some kind of upvoting and downvoting function. So uh, graded TCRs, first of all, function like TCRs in the way that um, Alice you know, can register an entry and there's going to be some kind of quorum decision whether this entry you know, comes on the list or not. But in the second step, we would like to make sure that maybe this entry you know, gets a higher rank or a lower rank. And they, uh, the way it goes is, for example, Charlie thinks that, hey, this is a good entry. And he now stakes um, in order to upload or upgrade the ranking, or maybe downgrade the ranking. Um, and there's going to be, again, some kind of majority vote behind that will decide whether it makes sense that this is like an entry that deserves a higher rank or not. Uh, the protocol works quite uh, in a similar way. So Charlie stakes, you know, there are those um, readers in that example that counter stake, then there's a majority vote, and uh, the winners share the winning stake uh, among each others. Um, so analyzing this protocol, you know, naturally reduces, you know, to the analysis of TCRs. With one exception, you know, we now have to analyze, you know, this additional party, <coughs> namely Charlie. So let's think about, you know, the incentives or disincentives of Charlie. So uh, Charlie clearly is incentivized to make maybe a good proposal simply because he stakes, and if for some reason, you know, uh, the majority figures out, nah, this is a bad, bad proposal, then he will lose his stake. On the other hand, the voters are also incentivized to, to you know, make a honest uh, voting decision, simply because they're also gonna lose uh, their stake in case the quorum decides against uh, a different choice. Yeah. So, to sum up, the idea is to, to design a protocol which somehow incentivizes the new players to, you know, behave honestly and contribute um, to the wealth of the list. So, um, how <coughs> do we use that kind of concept in the Weave network? So, in the Weave network, we're faced in a situation that, for example, we have IoT devices, for example, a car, um, and um, we want to make sure that this car <coughs> connects to a marketplace, um, and the marketplace can be sure about the quality of the data. So this is somehow a relation of trust. So can I trust this car or not? But there is some kind of intrinsic problem. And uh, this is quite related to the, to the bootstrapping problem you mentioned. So there, there is that uh, circularity problem of there's, there's a new car. I do know anything about this, this car. It's like a new kid on the block. So how can I trust this car? So how can I make sure that this car um, produces good data? Um, and in order to do so, it makes sense to have some kind of graded ranking mechanism, you know, that over time, you know, say over, uh, you know, a, a period of, of a week or a month where the car is uh, continuously scrutinized by a marketplace, um, is verified whether it's trustworthy or not. And based on that, it gets a higher and higher and higher ranking. So that's some kind of different form how to say bootstrap the trust. 
And it, at some point, maybe the car will reach a sufficient trust level that it, it, it gets access to, say, a different marketplace. A marketplace which maybe has stronger trust requirements on, uh, on the car. Yeah? So in order to you know, somehow solve that circularity problem, it makes sense you know, to upgrade or downgrade uh, the ranking of the car and this way establish a trust level. Yeah, so for, for example, it starts with a rank zero, so it's really the new kid on the block, but over time, you know, through that kind of challenging mechanism in the graded TCR protocol, it can build up trust. Um, but graded TCRs are, I think, only a natural extension of existing TCR protocols. So there are still a lot of problems with them. And one problem is, for example, if one would then implement natively in the Ethereum network, you know, it uh, could explode the cost in order to bootstrap um, the uh, registry. So. Uh, we're doing now a lot of research in order to figure out how to reduce the costs for those uh, TCRs. Um, we're also thinking about you know, new ways how to implement the voting scheme. So I already mentioned that maybe uh, that kind of linear voting, so uh, one vote per stake is maybe not the right choice. Maybe you know, we ne need uh, other voting principles based on quadratic voting where maybe... Um, you know, one has to stake in a quadratic fraction um, in the number of votes. Um, then there are a lot of challenges in terms of how one can reduce the whole computational efforts. So here we're trying to think about whether it's possible to use some kind of proof uh, systems, you know, related to those DK snarks, which allow us to uh, prove in an off-chain way that you know, maybe the voting was successful, and this way only uh, you know, do the on-chain certification <laughs> about the result of the vote. And last but not least, you know, related to what Ocean's people proposed, uh, what is, say, the connection to layered TCRs? So um, I don't know whether you already talked about that. Are you going to do? Okay, so layer TCRs is, is also a very interesting protocol, how to build up uh, some kind of ranking or some kind of iterated trust relationship. Um, but the approach is a bit different and it's interesting to understand and I think this is definitely something we should work on at some point, you know, to figure out, you know, how one can combine the ideas. And from my feeling is that, you know, uh, graded TCRs allow us to uh, do some kind of ranking within a registries and layered, you know, allow us to build up that ranking over different registries. And I think combining those two approaches might result in something which is like a, a continuous way how to bootstrap trust. So, having said this, you know, I'm done with my talk. So if you guys have any questions, that's the right moment. <laughs>